Valley and have it be a, a strictly to go roasted chicken restaurant because it travels well, like you said, and then all the sides that go with chicken yeah. is like beans, well, coleslaw. I hate to cut potatoes. it to you guys, but it is six o'clock. Tra- so oh, Kyle, well. Kyle, time is up about your stupid chicken. We're going, Actually, we're going it, deep. Would, it would sound good. Chicken does is it sounds really good. Anyways, um, Kyle, um, are you ready to go live? I'm ready to go live. Parker, are you ready? I think so. All right. Well, we're gonna go live in three, two. One. We're live! Yeah! We've done it! We're here. We're at number six. Woo! Yeah! This Um, is pretty incredible. Welcome, everyone. For those of you tuning in, we are here. This is called Let's Cut the Small Talk, the best party game book ever invented by our uncle Jeff Reuter. In 1991, Parker and I here resurrected the book. We decided, hey, let's make a YouTube show out of the thing. Um, We've already had five guests. Kyle is our, our, this is our fifth guest, I should say, um, oh. our sixth live episode. We're so excited. Sixth. Why don't you introduce our special guest here, Parker? He's Who the is si- this guy? He's the sixth guest, I think. He's number Fifth six. guest, sixth live episode. We'll check the facts Oh, you know, later. he's right, he's right, he's right. Kyle and I were on a different Sounds like you line. guys are as good as math as I am. Yes. <laughs> we good at math. <laughs> Numbers is my specialty. Okay. Hey. So... Kyle here is a dear friend of ours. Uh, his fiance, uh, I've grown up with our entire life, really close family friend. Um, and I was just able to meet Kyle. He just moved down here to Orange County from the Bay Area. He was in tech. And now he is a student of the Groundling School in Los Angeles. And he's a hell of a funny guy. He makes me laugh almost every day on Instagram if I watch his stories. So welcome to the show, Kyle Nelson. Welcome to the show. Woo! If you watch my stories, yeah, oh, we're watching watch my sure. stories. No, they're Thank hilarious. <laughs> so, Kyle, the groundlings, don't you have like that? Is the you have to go through the groundlings if you ever want to go onto SNL or you want to get somewhere in in comedy? Is that correct? Pretty, pretty much, the groundlings is very very prestigious improv school down in Los Angeles. Um, Will Ferrell, Melissa McCarthy have all been there. Wow. Kind of popped up. Uh, first one in California, the original, as probably a lot of the old people tuning in now, is Second City, which started out in Chicago. Also, big, they and, have a Second and City. And that's in, moved now to Hollywood as well? Yep. They, well, they, yeah, they have a, a school and a, and yeah, a show in Hollywood as well. Right um, And so I, do, I actually do voiceover and voice acting stuff at Second City, uh, but I do the improv um, at the Groundlings on Melrose, which is pretty That's cool. That's amazing. So well, amazing. once this is all over, I want, we got to come to one of your improv shows. We got to we'll blast it out. That'd be so much fun. Watch his oh, stories you should. at yeah. KyleNelson.comedy. Watch the stories. You it's got, hilarious. It's it's in our Instagram. Check it out. All right, Kyle. We're all here for this little book, the game, the little black book. Um, so how the game's gonna work is there's 300 questions. You get to pick a number, one through 300, and then we'll, we'll uh, ask the question. you got to answer it. So, Parker, I think you go ahead. Kyle, ask a number. I want a number from you, Kyle. One through 300. You want a number from me? Yes, yeah, sir. So you got to answer this question. We're gonna, Parker's going to ask the question. you got to answer it. One through 300. Give us a number. Uh, you... <laughs> 69. Wrong house. Oh, 69. man. Gonna You're going with that. 69. I'm going to tell you, 69, you just... It's an interesting that was an, question. That was a hip fire. That was a hip fire. Yeah. I like that. That was just a go-to number. Yeah, yeah let's just go was. there. Okay, this is actually interesting, and I love this question for anybody out there. 69, which profession, other than the ones you have had, would you like to be in right now if you could start out close to the top of your field? So you could be a VP, you could be that president, you could be, your your, your name is recognized in that field. I, I think I'd want to be in robotics. I'd want oh. to be a, like Boston Dynamics in robotics, building that, those animals that essentially are going to kill us. The, okay, because, have you seen the Black Mirror episode? That scared me with a dog looking thing. No. And then Boston Robotics has that actual, has, has it built. I mean... They're wild. They're wild. They can run. They can get knocked over. They're like cheetahs. They're incredible. Yeah. I would want to. I would want to work there. I'd want to be at the top. 
because I assume then I'm the controller. So when they do turn on everyone, they're not going to turn on daddy. No, (laughs) not on daddy. Daddy Daddy. say (laughs) pups go get them. That's what, that's what's going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. I think, Uh, not the best question, but I'm happy we got 69 out of the You know what? Give me a quick response. A quick response is hard to come from Parker. I, I, well, I take a lot of care and thought into answering the question. And so. time's up. Um, I would want to be a, be a pro. I'd, I'd probably want to be a pro squash player. It's a sport I don't know much about, but I think it would be. It, it's it's big in Europe. I feel like it, it's it would be an interesting uh, professional athlete to be. So that was that's where I want. And to be. I think you get to wear short shorts. And I've got some good-looking calves. I, I think you that do. is I think true. You, you got some short. nice, big old calves. Okay, are you ready? Important for the most important. All right, let's hear it. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I mean, kind of along the lines as Kyle is the CIA. If you could be at the top of the CIA, Ooh. because here's the thing: then you just know things. I feel like you're gonna get to know real wild things and some clues and some answers that maybe you can't know if you're just a. Do you want to know those things, though? I thought about this. Do you want to know? What there is to know. I don't know that I want to know. Like Kennedy, okay, yeah, I, I want to know who killed Kennedy. I want to know if Abraham Lincoln was real or not, um, as well as, but I, I think, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I, no, that's that's a conspiracy theory out there because the Abraham Lincoln at Disneyland is so realistic. People think, they're not sure if he, you know, Walt Disney's crazy. <laughs> well, I saw but his sculpture. Space and stuff, I don't think I'd want to know about space. I don't think I'd want to know that there's, there's other life out there that are obviously more intelligent than you, us. But if that you is know an that, but if way you to go. Know I that, didn't even think about going that direction. But that's a great. That's a, that's I think it's too much that. for some people. Yeah. But if you're on the inside track, and even though those things carry a heavy burden on your shoulders, don't you think it'd be interesting to be on the inside track? No, I, I know the stuff, but I, but I know the stuff. So I can avoid the, yeah. you know, the bad things. I can kind of capitalize maybe on the good things. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy theories going on right now with the coronavirus and stuff. I would, I would love oh, to man. know. Oh, man. Do we like we Bill go Gates? Down a we dark, don't like Bill Gates? We can go uh, down a what? dark rabbit hole there. But, Kyle, it's, it's now time for you to ask us a okay. question. And this is my, no my favorite smart. part of the episode. For those fans who've seen it from day one, Kyle Nelson – you get to choose Parker or myself. Who would you like to ask the question first? I'm going to do Parker because I know he has gotten zero love. Oh. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking Parker about. Parker was a fat kid just like – I'm still a fat adult, but Parker was a fat kid. <laughs> but, hey, once you're born he a fat kid – he's, ho- he's the story we all want to be. We want to strive to be Parker. Yes. I don't know if anyone's friends with Parker, but he was, he was a fat, fat kid. He was really <laughs> oh, he- fat. Oh, and shoot. now he's good looking. Oh well, no! Wait. Here's the thing. No, we're all good looking, but once you're a fat kid at heart and you're able to, con- you understand that love of everything that's all good with being that. Oh. Oh yeah. This is limited edition from the year 2000. Do the math. How many years ago was that? That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is gold. That. That right there, Kyle, for you looking. Oh, at I was gonna say, what are we looking? Oh, oh man, this is, that is not a great pattern on you, Parker. <laughs> It kind of not a great pattern, Kyle. Funny I story, don't. Like, I don't have a soccer picture because when we went to Hampton Field for me to get my soccer picture when I was that age, I shit my pants. <laughs> um, and my mom had to take me home. And you know how you have those white shorts, and it was running down my. I got in so much trouble. And at this time, our house had a carpet in the bathroom. <laughs> And so I got shit all over the carpet. Oh my god! No, dude, that old ASO jersey that I had—it it might as well have been a large tarp because if you're a fat kid in one of those, it you—it doesn't matter. You either look like a sausage case or you movie. look like just a yeah. freaking tarp dude, movie. At least, yeah. at least you had soccer. You know what my sport really was was swimming. So I was this little <laughs> Buddha boy Bowie. in a speedo because <laughs> everyone wore speedos. And so here's a quick story. My wonderful brother, Charlie Nelson, uh, hey, Charlie. Took, took, took a picture of me, and then he was head of yearbook in eighth grade and put this picture of me. I was in middle school. I was in elementary school. Put this picture of me in the yearbook of me sitting like this, and my belly's pretty much going over the Speedo. So it just <laughs> looks like I'm sitting there naked, like a fat Buddha when you're leaving a Chinese restaurant. All right, and Charlie, so- if you're listening, my email 
uh, or actually comment in the this this, and I will fi- I'll direct message you or go to our Instagram. Let's cut the small talk. I need that photo. I need that. Uh, all right. So Parker, my question to you. No, 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 no. Oh, you want? Oh, oh, allow it. Oh, okay. allow it. If, if, Am I is, breaking the rules? No, nope, no, nope, no rules. You, broken. you graciously picked me the first time in show history. So please ask me away. I'm so happy. Oh no, 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 no. You ask. I apologize. No, I, that was not kosher of me. No, no. You want to know what my answer is to that question, that book, and you ask me right Just now. Just give us the number. What's the number that? Two ten. Two ten. Two ten. Okay. I'm gonna look at it while Park. You so read it. To read it to me. Me read it to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Something that no one would have asked of me before sixth grade. <laughs> you are in Las Vegas, and the person in front of you drops a money clip full of money. Do you pick it up and return it, or slip it into your pocket? You don't think anyone has seen you. Okay, come here, on. You're, you, you, you got this. You if this guy's this walking out of the Bentley, and then he's rolling, and he's walking into the casino... I think you still got to pick up that money clip and hand it back to him because if you pick it up and give it back, if that guy's cool, oh yeah, he's going to he's going to slip you a couple hunskies and that's going to feel bad. Guaranteed. If I lo- if I my wallet dropped and someone said, "Hey, and it was in Vegas of all places like Vegas, I would assume, "Oh, my wallet's gone forever." But if someone said, "Hey, you dropped this." I would go, "Oh, here's the cash." Here, here, take a twenty. Like I would be. I'd yeah, be you get a like, you get a reward for your 100%. good deed. If you pick up that cash and you go and gamble it, I feel like that's when all of the bad things. You're just gonna lose. To you. Your karma is not gonna be on your side. I disagree. I think everyone <laughs> in Las Vegas is a bunch of dirt bags. They're all there for the mm-hmm. wrong reasons, and they don't deserve the money. So I'm doing them a favor by taking that and going to the Caesars Buffet, which is the number one Ooh. buffet in Las Vegas, Plug. and spending it there. Give us a and free entree. Qu- quickly, on the topic of Las Vegas, I'd like to give a shout-out to my best friend, Sammy, who is a little tiny Pomeranian dog. Aww, Sammy. Hello. Hey, Sammy. Sammy, cheers. I hope you're cheers, safe in Sammy. Las Vegas. Ugh. Wonderful. All right, what's next? Well, you okay? I, I I love the fact that you're just you're just taking. What do you, what's the first thing you do with the money clip though? You just take it, but then what do you do? Are you going to go throw it on black? Throw it on a hand? A poker? Or are you just pocketing? The first thing I'm doing with the money clip is probably throwing the money clip away, but keeping the money. To be honest with you, who uses a money <laughs> hey, clip? These I days? found a Louboutin money clip in Vegas. No joke. I found it in the hallway. There's no money attached to it. But I still have that move done. Probably not, because who uses a fucking money clip? Who uses Dude, that? let's bring it back. They used to be cool in the back in the day, right? You know what my dad used to use? Uh, he used to take the thing in the middle of the Reese's. You know, just that white plastic. It's like a white piece of paper. Huh? Never mind. My dad's okay. very cheap. He, he didn't have a money clip, but he divided his money. Kyle, um, I want to get get a question from you. Pick a number one through three hundred. And before you give me a number, while you're thinking of that, I want to let you know that Daisy is in the comments, and she says, that's my future son-in-law? Oh, no, cousin-in-law. Cousin-in-law, I apologize. It, the comment is n- yeah. now way up there. And um, Mandy. So. Don't forget Mandy, my future cousin. Mango. <laughs> Daisy and Mandy. Oh, yeah, and Mandy. Right, you right. got that. You got the and shout my, out. And Daisy has there. a concert tomorrow, actually, <laughs> live on YouTube from Sun Valley, Idaho. Oh. Quite a singer, that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, Kyle, give me a number. Uh, I don't know any numbers above 100, so Sienna, what's the number? <laughs> one. Oh, oh. She picked, I picked out a few, but I guess that's not the point of the game. What about... That's a good number. 216. 216. Ooh, like 216. 216. All right, here we go. Please so, do not be... Please be juicy. All right. <laughs> Kyle, I need you to go back to your 16-year-old self. Maybe your 12-year-old self. Maybe we go back. I don't know when this started for you, but... Number 216. Do you have wet dreams? Or did you have wet dreams? That is the question. Interesting question. Yeah. Uh, for... My family and future family, please Earmuff. turn down the TV at this time. Um, <laughs> no, I, to be honest with you, I never really did have uh, a wet a wet dream. What uh, is a wet dream? Music, or maybe I did and I didn't know. A wet know. dream, a, a wet, can I clarify, a wet dream for Dylan or anybody's listening is when you ejaculate in your sleep. 
So I'm wait, hold on. Me, a, male human, a male human species ejaculates in human. his sleep, possibly aroused by dreams. I don't know too much about this, but that's what I've heard. Is you that- guys 100% went to private Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Um, Guilty. So I went to public school, and so I, I actually with. matured. I had armpit hair in fifth grade. <laughs> I don't know if I had a wet dream. I bet if I did, it was probably like in first grade and my mom just cleaned it up and didn't tell me. But um, you I, I, right matured, I matured quickly and I had an older brother, again, Charlie, who taught me about things. He actually taught me about how to do... Oh, man. That's Charlie. the free birds and the bees talk is this motion. Oh, is man. The, self, the self-commitment. He taught me that and I went and did it not knowing. I think I was like in sixth grade and I thought I was like growing up from down there. It was oh, so terrifying. Wait, okay, I had the I same ex- funny st- after you do before. I had the same experience, Kyle, and I'm so glad you brought this up because this is something I would never have ever brought up. I thought I broke it. Fun to talk about. I 100% thought I broke it. I thought it was, I broke, it was a good feeling, but I was like, oh my God, what the, what just happened? Yours is small enough to break? <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> so earmuffs for any of my uh, future me. family and my family watching, but do you remember those like cheap press a button four pronged massagers that you'd get like waiting in line at Michael's or something oh, for like man. a shoulder massage? Yeah, Sienna right? and I have one in our top drawer. Yeah. So they were a <laughs> so they were a big thing On back deck. in the day to do it, and I was a little kid, and somebody told me, and I just like set it down there, no joke. It was like I just went. And I, tr- and I sat on there and I pressed the button and I think it happened and the same thing happened and I was like, oh my god, I just think I broke it. I went, oh my. Yeah. And I, and so, oh yeah. So, so I, same. my first time wasn't like full around. It wasn't like, it was kind of like slapping a fish. Oh, fish. Like, I didn't know. Charlie was just like, oh, go play with it, man. Go see what happens. So I went in my room and I just kind of, I think I sat there just oh, playing my. the guitar. Yeah. Oh and, my and it just started throwing up everywhere. It was oh. a ter- It really, if you don't know what's going on, it's probably really scary. But I went to public school. 100%. So I, I had an idea. They showed us what a. Did you, did you guys ever have that where they pull up a kid that has a sweatshirt on and they go, this is a circumcised penis and this is a non circumcised <laughs> No, but that's a good segue into why we're all wearing Hawaiian t shirts because <laughs> we have these beautiful tiki. Tiki jugs, but Kyle one upped us with the full on tiki man. What are you drinking over there? This is empty because I'm not drinking out of it. Oh, okay. But it is from the, well, I'll just say Trader Vic's up there. Hey, while we have these up here, it is our Uncle John's birthday. So if you're watching Uncle John, Uh, happy birthday. birthday, Cheers, Uncle John. I got Uncle John. He's the the king of Hawaiian t shirts. So there you go. All right. You're asking. I want. I want a number. I'm going with uh, 298. You're asking 298. me 298. I want 298. I'm going like right up to the edge there. 298. Oh. Do you do you remember this one? Oh God! Please wait. Don't read it until we all. No, you have to read it too. You're him, reading Kyle. it to me, Kyle. And I want you sit. I need you sit. Look at me. I need you sit back a little bit. <laughs> That's good. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love your shirt, by the way. It's a great shirt. Love your shirt. Thank you. I know that. <laughs> Two ninety-eight. Would it excite you to have a video camera in the room while having sex? Yes. Next question. <laughs> I want two eighty-five. Oh, it's, yes. It's I'm gonna make two. one quick comment to it's that. Too easy. Yeah. What what scares <laughs> me? I bought a ring. You know that you're supposed to put by your front door? We actually just put it on our headboard. Oh, oh yeah. My <laughs> you want to get that that up close. So when you press the button, tell me what happens. Uh, so when I press the button, I get a notification and it starts to film. And pretty much, you know, we we film videos that way. <laughs> 294. Have you ever flashed a big rig trucker? Um, moon. Yeah. Wait, yes, I, I have. Wait, was I supposed to stay on the one question or not? No, I was. I, the I, only thing I was gonna say to that was, <laughs> I'm worried about the video camera in the bedroom because I do not want to see myself because I know it's not pretty. That's oh, just dude, my you're worry. not a fat kid anymore. It would give be me this pretty. ring light. I don't know. I want I, that I, light. I Put that light on me. Get the cameras ready. It would excite me. 
What, what I have found, because I was a football player, is going back to the tape is how you make yourself better. That's, that's ex- you know what, that is a type of education, a type of knowledge path that I could get on board with. So I appreciate yeah. that. I just hope the next question is not so okay. heavy. So I'll pick a number. No, it's Kyle's turn okay. to pick a number. Kyle, pick hey, a number. Parker. Parker, hey, you for- were a fat kid. Learn to share, bud. Learn to share. Parker's the best Dude, you, I, you know how hard it is for me when I have a plate of food and somebody's like, yeah, I'll take one fry. And I'm like, well, I ordered two fries because I know that you're going to take the fry. I, I used to freak out when people would take my fries. Like my family, I would freak out we'd have to leave the restaurant. So I have one quick funny story that Kyle will appreciate, you'll appreciate. When I go to In-N-Out, I go up to the counter and I take my order. And when the guy's done taking my order, he goes, eight down. And that's the number of patties that are being thrown on the grill because the order for me Holy is so large shnikes. that he has to let the people in the back know to get ready for the order. Get the truck, back it up. When, when you guys had Hayes, what's Hayes' last name? Pilar. Pilar. When you, who is a, an NFL player, he played at SC. Did he ever talk to you guys or when you guys were in college with him, what was like the craziest meal he ever ate? He ate one time before a game. He had. He told me he had like question. two full plates of pasta, and he dumped salt on it before the big game because he wanted to soak, soak. in all the water and be as big and uh, like a mass as he was, so he could That's just wild. keep his. He's his hitting water people, weight. so he was a linebacker, so he wanted to be so, big. I, I went to high school, and I was friends. I went to high school. Friends as my other buddies with a guy named Shane Scove that played linebacker at Stanford. Yeah, he's and great. one time we went to Denny's, and I joke, and he was one with one of his defensive linemen. We went to Denny's with all, you know, you don't know the guy, so it That's doesn't matter, move. but we went with him. And they just pointed, they each pointed to one page they wanted. And they were like, I'll just take this. The Denny's like, page the order. Fuck. Yeah, Dude, that is heavy. one of the most savage things to ever do, is just I don't order know that a I page could do that. of the menu. Kyle, yeah, pick a number, page. one through three hundred. Your favorite number. I want to know That's your favorite amazing. number. I love that. Or you can do. A... I'm sorry. They did that last. Oh, not no, no, never mind. Oh, P- Thank you, Cece. Another number. Why do you guys have me choosing all the numbers? PSCN. Uh, two oh six. Two oh six. Two oh six. PSCN, love you, and I uh, love Gary. So. Love you. Yeah, Who's Sienna, Kyle? Here. Sienna's, Sienna's my fiance. We're getting married oh, in October. Congratulations! Cheers to Thank that. You. You. I, pr- I proposed to her at Disneyland on the Haunted Mansion, and uh, I kind of blacked out. And the way I asked her was, <laughs> we were right in front of Madame, Madame Loriotis. Cece, you know, like, wait, you're married to a cat? Or you're getting... <laughs> Ooh. So we were on that's Haunted Gary. Mansion. Oh, that's Gary. Oh. Sienna, and we're in front of the crystal ball head, and I and I had this whole speech planned and everything, and you, I just kind of blacked out like you do before test. Um, and I guess what I asked her, I don't, re- I didn't remember this. I guess what I asked her was, you know, this ride would be a lot more fun if we were fiance and fiance. And then I just put the ring on her finger and I sat back just looking. Wait, that's actually pretty cute that you kept it short, simple, and sweet. And I know Sienna, so she was probably just like confused viciously as she's getting spun on this Haunted Mansion ride. Because <laughs> I know how that how that ride goes. But that's amazing. Did she say yes? And then when you came out, did you guys kiss what, and enjoy? Did the you game? say yes? Yes. You did say yes. Oh, okay, good, good, good. You oh, I asked. Will, you said, "Will you marry?" Me? Oh, will you marry me uh, too? I guess. I, I don't, just had to I confirm was, it. It was scary. So it's so funny that you guys are right here. What a perfect question, 206. Ooh. Do you have a sexual fantasy about someone your mate knows? And I'll open this up to celebrities included and fantasies that may be, you know, paramount picture quality. So it's okay. I get it. Uh, you, I, I can answer right away if you'd like me to. Yes, yes I do. Her name is Jennifer Aniston or Rachel Green, <laughs> as some people know her. She has nice. been my number one choice ever since 1994. I like she how you... still is. I believe in college in 2010. In the in January 2010, she was on the cover of GQ magazine with just like a tie on, and it was the sexiest thing ever. Yeah. Um, 
but a hundred, Jennifer Aniston and, and even Fat Monica from Friends sometimes. <laughs> oh, wow. That's Would fun. you just take her to the coats? Would you just take her to the coats on the bed and, and then just do her dirty when she was Bar- the coats? Bury her under the coats, yeah. A hundred percent. That's hilarious. That one... <laughs> do you have one from last time? People know mine as uh, Star Wars. Uh, Rachel Green plays that for Ross Geller in Friends, and that's kind of where... I'm not going to lie, the original Star Wars, not as hot as Rachel Green playing Star Wars. Yes, but then we also, and then it cuts to her mother, or his mother. <laughs> yeah, that's a little weird. You're so right. That's, you got pa- to pause it before that part just pops and up. And that's, that's why I don't think I could ever do the Star Wars fantasy, because I think I'd think of friends, and then I'd think of my mom. Oh, and it would be more no, Kyle. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. And Marla doesn't need to be up there. Oh, man. Marla doesn't need to be up there. Uh, Not in that moment. (laughs) Not in that frame. Not in that space of mind. Oh, she deserves better. Okay, so... I like how you've switched from a can to a glass. You're (laughs) not drinking out of the other tiki glass, but... All right, so Kyle gets... I want to pick a question. Yeah. Because he just picked two of us. Yeah, Kyle, you're going to ask, Hey, look at that. That's color color wine. wine. We love that. Pick it up at your local stores. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for that plug. That's from our sponsors. Drink colored wine for a colored night. Oh. <laughs> Drop the ED and that's our brand. Drop the ED. <laughs> Don't want the ED in there because that can get misconstrued for some things. Little. Yeah, boxes. Kyle. No. Uh, okay. Anyway, on to I want to. I want to. I want to pick one seventeen. Kyle, will you do the honors of reading that? I came, question? I came to 117 because. Oh my God! I wanted, I wanted to read this one. I. I've <laughs> oh man, uh, this is exciting. You know what else is exciting, Kyle? Is it is so hot in the studio that we have blocks of ice that I am standing on because it is so hot. I need, I need all of the temperature out of my body, or else my head would be red. The lights are hot when you're at the top. Yeah, I run hot usually, but uh. I don't have any pants on right now, so I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Prove it. All right, number 117. <laughs> do, you like, do you like using oils during sex? Why are we getting no, all of tell, these yeah, sexual questions? I'll tell you. Sir, because we're wearing Hawaiian shirts and sex is... It just comes It comes with the Hawaiian shirt. It just exudes it. Does. it. Have we'll you get, seen Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> Margaritaville. Okay, we'll answer this one, and then we'll try to pick one that is is not as provocative, so the family can listen in. Yeah, let's ask a question about AIDS next, because there's a new mode. <laughs> That's book a good segue. That's a good segue. Natural there, segue probably. point. All right, Parker, I want to hear this. I, I, my answer is easy. I don't like lotions. I don't like oils <laughs> in any walk of life in my typical day to day. So I'm going to say definitely not in the bedroom. I like to keep it clean. I'm you don't PG- cook with oil. I'm a PG thirteen. I was just gonna. Better. I was gonna say that, but I also gonna say, what about that green jar that you love to use? So here's the thing. There's a thing called working hands. Oh, okay. And if you're out there, thing. send me a, a case, and I'll plug you every time. And it's a lotion that Parker, doesn't feel like lotion. Hey, Parker. Parker hands. will send you a case and plug you every time. By the way, he said that. I did not. Kyle. Trademark. Pending. I'm from San Francisco, so plug me jokes are very easy. <laughs> there is this. <laughs> It just goes right over your head. You don't even recognize. Butthole plug. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you mean? You mean? Andre Tree can't see me. Ask Kyle about Yamez. All right. So Yamez is my dad. Yamez uh, is, is 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 his name is Jim Nelson. But uh, <laughs> when we were on a cruise in Mexico, my brother. Or I, and we don't know if it's Mexican or, or Jewish sounding. We started calling him Yamez. Yamez. So everyone in our hometown of Piedmont, which is a really small town, 800 uh-huh. kids in our high school total. Like, so all the teachers, all the coaches just, just figured out like, oh, we'll just call him Yamez because that's what they refer to him as. Not knowing that my dad's a pretty straight shooter. Like, no, no, no <laughs> bullshit. And like, he would, people would call him Yamez. Like, Who the fuck is Yamez? <laughs> oh, and no. They get upset. And it was Fire hilarious. Up. And then we nicknamed uh, my mom Shaniqua. Um, um, I, I call my why. dad, if you want to know, 
uh, Marquisha. My you uncle. Marquisha. My uncle Mark. Dylan calls him. We call Marquisha. Him. Marquisha. Actually, well, I didn't give him that name. Uh, Rio Tambaro gave him that name. <laughs> hey, not that name. I love it. Here. He's he's oh. incognito. I love Rio. Rio, if you're I think watching. nicknames are nicknames are one of the most important things in life in college. It, this is really sad in college. I don't know some of my best friends' names from college because they had nicknames. No, that's you don't fine. know their real names. I don't know. What their was real your name? drunk alter ego? Did you have a name for your Bo- drunk? One guy had Bobo Boston. Uh, that's a he good had one. a lot of a lot of names, and I I, I know his name, but I shouldn't. <laughs> Do you have a drunk alter ego? Like people thought me in college. People thought my name was actually Grizz or Grizzly because that's what I was known as. And so Grizz. people always are like, oh, hey, Grizz. What's up, And Grizz? Like, even to this day, I'll see people out from college and be like, Grizz, what's up? But people hear that as Chris. <laughs> okay, yeah. wait, wait. You are, I... now, you are now Grizz. Wait, can I tell – I told Alyssa I really like the name Grizz or Grizzly for an actual name, and I've never heard it been used as until – As a baby? As a like baby. Like kids? You just said it. You just said the name you're called, and I love you. And so it's like perfect. Like you could be, be a named after. So my cousin Kate that lives in Germany, um, I don't know what her last name is now, but she just had a kid. She had a kid about it two years ago, and she named him Wolfe. Badass. Wolfe, and then Shorty is. How do you spell Wolfe. that? Wolf. Wolf Fang. A Wolf Fang. Oh, I, I was hearing Wolf Bang. Wolf Gang. Oh, like, Okay, Kyle. Like Mozart. Before I'm we, I think we should have started to show off with that information. <laughs> oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Do you want to do one more question, or do you want to then do the sure, halftime show? Go ahead, show? Kyle. One quick question. Pick a number between zero. We have 30 minutes left. We got to finish the book. <laughs> well, it, well, that is. Then we got to go faster than this. We have one minute per question. Go, go, fire. Pick a number. Pick a number. Why do you guys always throw at me? You don't need to look down. Don't look 272. down. 272. 270. I'm looking at Gary when I'm looking down. It's not like I'm cheating. I'm looking look at, at look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Okay, this look is another sexual question, so I'm going to pick a different <laughs> Yeah, pick a different one. Okay, let me... That's a good one. Which one? I no. thought 272 was good. Did we already do it? No, do 177. Do 177. That's a good number. 177, okay. It's Sorry. incredible there's 300 questions, but I think on every show... For some reason, people guess or say the same numbers. Which well, is okay. No, that is actually insane. We have had the same questions repeated multiple and, times. And it's and like it's, I the book I really. for, for everyone watching at home, I swear to you, there's no. we don't have a list of questions. These are all random. And for some reason, our guests continue to pick the Are there people ones. listening at home? This is the live one or is this the rehearsal? <laughs> this is... Is it Friday? Yeah, it says Friday on my oh, watch. Yeah. I would have not said yeah. a lot of Okay, one, Kyle, 177, and I cannot wait for your answer on this. If you could ask a crystal ball one question and get the exact answer, what would it have to do with near future? Would it be in the past or would it be in the present? It would be in the present because I live in the present. I don't care about the past and I don't worry about the future. So I think... I think the past is in the past. It is what you had. There, why would you look back in the past? And to the future, I don't really want to know because if I know, then it could d- destroy the future. So, so I want to know what's going on in the present. Yeah, so what that. would you, if you could have one answer that's 100% truthful, what would be your one question to pose to this crystal ball to, to get that answer? You pose a Did question. Did Epstein kill himself? Okay, I love where you're going with that because I was going to go along the same lines as how, uh, how long until the coronavirus is over? Oh, no. That's a few years, bud. Sorry. Shnikes. Don't tell me that. I don't want to yes, hear that. We're not bringing the mood down. We're yeah, staying we up. Sorry. We're staying up. Here we are. Did Epstein kill himself would be really fascinating because I just listened to a podcast about the Manson murders and how paperwork is getting released about it and how i love the manson murders the, have you read helter skelter great book dude I'm helter not. skelter and there's a new one by tom o'neill that just came out and it was like 60s then and now and he just uncovered a bunch of information I, I will say in all fairness i did not read helter skelter i listened to helter skelter in audio i take it i take it um so I just I glanced at the um, comment section and uh, Daisy asks Kyle, 
Do either of these guys have girlfriends? I oh. don't. I do. Oh. He he is uh, single and ready to mingle, ready to get that flirt on, take you to a drink post quarantine, whatever you're looking for. Oh, well, I so have nothing Daisy. to add to that, Parker. You said it all. Thank you very much. I am an excellent winger. Kyle, I want you to, I want you to ask me a question, or no, I want you to pick a number because you just answered one. Pick a number, or Kyle, if you've gone through the book, we mailed it to you this week. If you've seen a question that you liked and you want to pose on the show, let's just get into a roundtable. Wait, table you discussion. know what? Screw that, Kyle. Kyle, I sent you something. We dropped off a little Easter egg on your front door. Do you have it with you? Save that question. Oh, dear. Do you have it with you? Oh, do you have it with me? For those of you just tuning in, we are doing our halftime show. Everyone, we have these eggs. If you can see them, they're beautiful little eggs. Um, we don't know what's inside of them, but we do know that they are some sort of animal. animal. Like a jungle animal. Someone maybe from the, the, the safari, maybe from the zoo. It's, a, it's some sort of animal. So we like to do a little halftime show. So we're gonna pull um, them out. So we're gonna we're gonna see in the comments. I want you, I want to see someone guessing what we're what. Who's gonna who be what? Ha, what? What is Kyle? Is Kyle a jaguar? Is Kyle a gazelle? Kyle, what's your excavating Parker, technique? Parker, is he a, a hippo? Is he? Uh, oh. I got. What do you got in there? I'm gonna use here. Kyle. And more importantly, while we dig into this, oh, while we really dig into this, I want yeah, you to baby. dig into this question. We had a heated discussion about it, but I, I want to know live if you change your answer, if you're going to succumb to this. Is a hot dog a sandwich? This is a really... What is that? Is that a rhino? I got a rhino, dude. I love this you know, animal. What does that remind you of? A rhino. What does a rhino remind you of? A, power, you a powerful, powerful I, animal. I, I don't... Love. I don't know. Ace Ventura? Don't. Ace Ventura when he's in the rhino and oh, he talks yeah. I don't know what mine is, but it's a th it's something. I can't see it. I gotta It's a gazelle, bro. It's That's a gazelle. a gazelle. I'm a gazelle. Kyle, what'd you get? I got a cheetah. Oh, oh right. dang. Fast You're like so a quick. Cheetah. Guys, can I just say that's probably the most fun toy I've ever played with? Hey, that target. was incredible. You walk hey, around Target. I don't have much joy in quarantine and that. That okay. was joy. That so, was what I needed. Kyle, let's do a round table of questions and get that dialogue back going. I'm so happy you got Cheetah because you are fast and sleek like Quick a sexy witted. daddy, sexy mama. Yeah. You yep. know, yeah. you're both. And, uh, yeah, and Cheetahs run fast. Hey, who oh, does your hair? There goes Gary right now. Gary's kind of like a cheetah. <laughs> okay, Kyle, is there any questions in the book that you you saw when you received the book in the mail that you liked and that you'd like to throw out there? I think he's yeah, no, so actually, I, I oh, picked oh, out instead of picking random. I picked out eight of those questions, uh, but I I dumped my book over, so I don't have this anymore. Oh no! No, you did not. Do you remember them off the top of your cuff? No, I don't. That's so Kyle, guys, who does your hair? Because it looks great, by the way. Guys, thank you for asking that. I'd actually like to make a little plug here. Uh, my hair is done by Ava Lampkin. Ava Lampkin is a great <laughs> hair cutter. Nice. Uh, she has a garage set up with a big Texas Longhorn on the bottom of the garage floor. So wow. if you'd like to go over there, it is $25 per haircut. Wow. And you get is what you get. It, you can yeah. choose the size of the bowl, but that's the cut. I love that. Thanks for that info. Uh, we have people asking Ava? if they can call in. People you cannot call in, but that would be a cool feature for maybe another episode. Maybe another hey, that app. would be great. Just write, if you have anything that you want to say, just write a question in the comments. Yeah, write, write in the a, comments. Throw in I'll... a number. Throw in a number that you want. Throw in uh, maybe your favorite number, and we'll, we'll, we'll ask those questions. I have, a, I have a question for Kyle. I have another question for Kyle after that one. <laughs> one it's like an interview. Okay, Kyle, for $1,000, would you be willing to stand up in a crowded and popular restaurant and for at least one minute loudly berate a waitress for some trivial imperfection in the service, assuming you could tell her later that it was a joke, or you could give her money, you could split it with her? Yep, I would do it, and I would give her half of it. Wait, what? That's awesome. That makes that question... $500 to a... 
I worked in the restaurant industry. I worked at a, a famous little ice creamery called Fenton's up in Oakland, California. It's in the movie Up, if you've ever seen it, Pixar. Uh, I worked there, and so I know wait staffs don't make any money, which is important right now that everyone should be going out supporting local restaurants yep. and tipping extra, extra, extra. 100%. 100%. People need that right now. Hold on. Uh, it says you may not tell her. Oh, okay. Okay, well, then I wouldn't tell her, but I'd give her $500 after. You could not give her any of the money. It says okay, that right here. Okay, then I right would do here. it and leave the restaurant and be happy that I made $1,000. <laughs> yeah. I love it, you savage. All right. I don't know if I could have done it. Time. you got to make the money you can make. If that's guaranteed money and I just have to yell at a woman for a minute, <laughs> done a lot less. So that's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That oh, is man. actually hilarious because I could, not in a rude way or any bad way, but I could see you doing that, and it would be it would be funny. It would be something that maybe not the waitress receiving that, you know, but it, I think it could be hysterical. Kyle, um, if you were able to yell at one person, it might be this one. It's your first girlfriend, Molly Castles, is in the chat. Do, would you re yell at her right now, or is she one of your friends? She says hello. Oh, so can I be honest with you guys? This chick, I have not seen her. She was my first girlfriend in fifth grade. I have not seen her since seventh grade. Well, this say hi. She's here me. with us right I now. I don't know how she's in the chats right now. <laughs> I don't know how she figured out we're doing this show. <laughs> she is a stalker. She should be arrested. She should be held. Molly Castles, you know, Molly Castles is a sweetheart. She was my first girlfriend in fifth grade. We actually lived together. Oh, my goodness. But I lived I'm in dying. San Francisco, and she was wonderful. So That's amazing. Uh, what was the question, though? What did she ask? No, it was just, she's it just was, saying it was just hi. Like, no question. She's single, too. She's going to be coming down to Southern California this summer and also for her wedding, Parker. Oh. I live with her. Hey, here, I have a question for That's you. Nice no, juggies. <laughs> I, have, I have question number 306. 306. Are we getting invited to the wedding? <sighs> yes. If, oh! Oh, he's getting the invite. Well, you get a plus one, Parker. So Ooh. you can bring Dylan or you can bring Alyssa. Okay, uh, next question. Yeah, that's going to leave me in kind of a pickle. God, I'm setting you up with a volley here. <laughs> what is the next question? What's the follow up to that? I have. <laughs> I have a question. I'm gonna pick. Parker, are you the picking book. me or are you picking Alyssa? I, I'm gonna sidestep, pass for the moment, <laughs> and then I'm gonna I'm gonna just pick one. I'm gonna read it to the group. I'm gonna say uh, the first number on my head is 138. No way. That was the first number. I actually genuinely, genuinely yes, but That's I don't want to ask it. This is another. <laughs> have you ever it's shaved your ge Have you ever shaved your genitals bald, Kyle? Yeah, again, I was a swimmer, so I shaved full body. You had to go, you're like full a body. seal. And, and to save money, uh, our swim team actually held car washes, and so we would take the money that we <laughs> made at the car wash, and we would we would get our best, our best swimmers full waxes, because if you wax, it's significantly better than shaving. You're, and you're like a cheetah in the water. You're a water cheetah. Did you wear your Speedo at the car cheetah, wash? No, Dylan. She just don't like water. Um, <laughs> well, well you're a barracuda like a then. You're a, a dolphin. A, or a, I think a barracuda is faster than a dolphin. This is probably why he's not going to bring you to the wedding as a guest. Because I don't know my animal facts. Gosh dang it. Okay, Kyle, I have one for you. I'm just, I'm just going to read them out. 212. You're leaving the market and you back into another car and you put a small dent in it. You're not quite sure if anyone saw you. Do you leave a note or do you drive away? I drive away. And the reason is <laughs> I actually had this happen to me in high school at a Home Depot lot where I backed up in my Suburban. I hit a car. Not hard. It, it was maybe not even a dent, but I was like, you know what? I, there's cameras. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave my number and stuff. And that person in return tried to blame significantly more damage that they already had on me just backing up. So... You know what sucks is you can't trust people. You want to be a good guy. I yeah. want to be a good guy, but yeah. there's not enough good guys out there for me to be a good guy. Hey, you know who the good guys are? The fat kids. Those are That's the good true. guys. Those That's are the true. ones. But I am not do you a know good what you, guy then. Similar story, but not so much. I'm pulling into my first office with Color Wine in Costa Mesa. Oh, man. And homeless man standing there, uh, 
in Costa Mesa. You know, you've, you've seen him a few, you wave, you say hi. So I'm pulling in and this guy takes a cinder block the size of a catcher's mitt and throws it at my car, shatters my windshield. And call the police, long story short, nothing happened from it and he couldn't be held accountable. And I thought that that was like a, a wow moment. So kind of like you, you just, you lose your trust in like going, I want to do the right thing, but then you end up somehow getting- I get out of the over. car and beat the fuck out of that homeless man. To be oh, honest with you, in the moment, Lord. I joke you not, if someone were to do that, I would, I would be beyond- Living. Yeah, but well, what if you have like a knife or homeless, something? But if it was like, if it was a road rage incident and like, and the guy like grabbed it, like if he was, I don't know, I'd beat the fuck out of him. No. <laughs> oh I, my I Lord. don't like that. Like you just don't do that. No. That was the issue with living in San Francisco is you had all but, these homeless people and the homeless people could do whatever they what want if, in San Francisco. But if you were to fight back, you're the bad guy. That's true. So, that is interesting. That is kind of interesting. Here's what I've always heard with that is they have nothing to lose. So, yeah, would you want to go, go into a fight with someone who has nothing to lose? I wouldn't. That's I would not really pick good. a fight with someone who has nothing to lose. As probably many of my friends that are tuning in, hoping I have friends that tune in tonight. <laughs> you do have some friends almost every, tuning in. Every fight I, I am in, names. I do lose. Uh, and I lose those fights by somehow getting knocked out. May it be me running into a giant uh, glass window, chasing a little nimble little guy and knocking <laughs> myself out. Or bumping chest with a 450-pound Samoan in Chicago and getting knocked out. So, How yeah, I'm not a good fighter. You, you know, people seem and they're like, I'm going to take him. He's the big guy. But I'm more like Mikey from Recess. You know, that cartoon <laughs> Recess. I'm a lover. You, yeah, you, like, well, I'm not going to fight. It's, but if you and want also, to, I'll go tell you. No, 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 that's not true. You, that's not have, true. I will fight. If oh, I yeah. get into a fight, but you're I not, will fight. You're not engaging. I kicked out you're, of a rugby game for that once. Oh, so this man. Is, so this is my big move, is that I've never really been in a fight, but it sounds like you have. Do you ever do, like, the intimidating pose, and you go, no. I hope he thinks this is a real, you know, like, you kind of get ready for it, or no? No. Oh. No, absolutely not. You don't waste it. That's not how fights go. Fights happen quickly. What, they're Probably. not like in the movies, like storybooks? No, it's a jump. They, you either are getting <laughs> jumped or you're jumping. The coolest thing I ever did my during favorite, a fight... My favorite thing is the the one who they punch like this. A slap punch? The, 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 the coolest fight I probably got in where I almost got killed... My sister was there, actually, was at a little place called the Gold Club in, in San Francisco. They have a great buffet it is a strip club but they have a great lunch buffet and i got uh i got brought behind this glass window i don't know kind of hidden two bouncers grab me like this and they're yelling at me and i know they're about to jump me and attack me and so my only move in this situation is the guy standing right in front of me and i just go bam oh you did wow. not do the headbutt move from like a, a cool I did guy you I gave him it. a butterfly kiss. But what happened, if Ryan Rellinger, God bless him, if he's on this, I don't know if he is, or John Cedarkreutz, if they're on this, they were there. I got brought to the ground, and they were knocking, stomping me out. And this guy that what? we worked with at the time, Matt Dickerson, Dickerson or something, huge, six six five big old country boy, comes and brawls him off of me <laughs> because his best friend in Nashville was killed by bouncers stomping him out. Whoa, oh, dang, that's heavy. Yeah, so then I got carried out of the strip club at lunchtime, and my boss was driving by. So I got. Oh my lord, that is a freaking story. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to rewind. You have to that. try. You have to that try thing to digest it. it. He yeah. has given me the look like maybe we delete that. And Gary's yeah. looking at me like. No, don't worry. We have a 10 second delay. We've already got it covered. Our oh. um, camera oh. operator behind us, Sylvester. Sylvester. We'll, Gosh, we'll dang cut it, that in post. So you got a cat behind the behind the screen. Yeah, too. but yeah. it it looks like it's taking a full nap right now. I'll grab I'll grab Sylvester in a second. Say hi. But do, do, I want to. Do you have a, Do you want to pick a number? And then comment? don't because my friends Brooke Brooke and Brendan Newland have cat allergies the, and they're the too. The comments different. are lighting up. There are people in the comments having great discussions over here right now. Oh. So uh, hey, can everybody in the comments just throw out a number between zero and three hundred? We're gonna, we'll ask it, we'll answer it, and it's we'll actually kind of have a round table yeah. discussion. Throw some. Not a, I want to do 20, uh, 23. I think it was Top Mom who, at, who wanted 23. That's coming to you, Kyle. Number 23, I'm asking you. Okay. 
Would you be willing to be? Would you be willing to be? Come extremely ugly physically if it meant you would live for 200 years at any physical age you choose. I feel like you're already there. Wait, so what's... Repeat the question. Repeat the question. If you had to become extremely ugly, but it would mean you'd live for 200 more years, would you do that? But you live in the ugly state. You're oh, an ugly oh, you person. have to continue living in oh, the ugly really? state. No, 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 no. I think it's for five years. I think you. I think you. It to... says, "Would you be willing to become extremely ugly physically if it meant that you would live for two hundred years at any physical age? At any physical age. So, so you could be at physically twenty years old, but but so ugly. I'm so ugly. No one wants to look at me. Yes. Yeah, I would do it. You're into it. I would do it just for the fact of being part of history and, and seeing what's going on. You want to live 200 years after all this stuff that's going on right now. You want to live after 200 years? Yeah. Wow. I, I'm scared. I, I don't think that's that's too much time for me to be on the earth. I, I, I'm good. I'm good with... Dude, what's going on? The world's not ending. You, you can't no, but you said, you said it yourself. You said two years. Two years, dude. It's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be a strange world with masks. Two, and two years of getting used to it, but I think with stuff like this, positives come out of it. I think one of the most beautiful things to come out of the coronavirus is a, a month before Kobe Bryant died, everyone was saying, "Family is so important. I want to be part of family." And then, not to say that COVID nineteen is a blessing by any means. It's a horrible, horrible thing. But the fact that people are able to stay home and bond with their family is right. incredible. Like dads and moms are staying home and yeah. being with their kids. And I know it's driving them crazy, but if, if a month earlier we were all kind of saying, man, you got to hold your family tighter. And now you have that opportunity. It's a great thing. Yeah, Santa absolutely. and I were built for this. So yeah. we're, we're still getting along beyond we're, we're probably even stronger than we were before, but interesting. That's, it's a blessing. You got to look at the positives in yeah. life. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If you're only going to be negative, then you're a negative person. Right. Totally. Just be positive. I think the thing you would say half glass full. I was saying half glass full is if you've gone outside I, anywhere, you know, in the world, you can easily start to see the changes to like the the atmosphere around us. I mean, it's been the prettiest days. I mean, so that not, excites me. That, my hope is the fact that humans are staying in and, and we're seeing LA a little bit clearer. The the Indians are able to say see the um, Himalayan mountains and stuff. I think that's incredible. What that shows is is it is a little proof. If we do back off on some of the stuff we do, may it be factories in India, stuff like that, production or driving, right. the environment will come back. Well, and it's it, incredible. The interesting thing about life goes on about life that is that we're living on, uh, you know, something that's been here for millions of years, and it would only make sense if you're using certain energies or fuels. There's gonna be byproduct from it. Everybody knows that. We're just the era that's getting the crap end of the stick of it because we're so far advanced in kind of our timeline and history. So, in my opinion, I feel like this is a little, just a little wake up from a nap that is like. This could be our world. We're in a tough position right now. We don't want anybody to get hurt. I, I'm 100% on board with you that it's not a blessing by any stretch of the imagination, but it is showing some positive signs that I think that we have a global community and we can come together and we can make a great kind of next chapter for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, you got people are nicer. Have you noticed that going out? People are nicer. People are I willing. I need to walk around where you're walking around because I feel like people are staying six feet away from me and not saying hi. But I do see more people out and about. That oh, man, leads I... me to my next question. Yeah. Where is the strangest Dylan place like you've made going love? Down holes. The... Number one eleven from Connor Kelter. Thanks for tuning in. Number 111. Wait, Connor this? Kelter is the guy that looks just like Caroline Kelter, right? <laughs> yeah, the, he's like a very feminine looking man who likes to sail boats. That guy. Exactly. Yeah. Handsome devil. Where is the strangest place you've ever made love, Kyle? Uh, karaoke bar bathroom in Nanjing, China. Dang, Molly was a lucky first... Girl. <laughs> yeah, that was fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's, what? What? 
I mean, so I studied, I studied abroad in China. So I would say, you know, and you're, you're, you're a college kid. So you're, you're at, (laughs) you're doing stuff. You're, you're pretty active in what you're doing. And anybody that has studied abroad, I don't care if you're a parent watching this or if, if you're my, (laughs) you know, study abroad has one main thing and that's, you have a good time. So yeah, Terry, <laughs> yeah, right, good time uh, in Nanjing, China. Um, maybe nice. also possibly the Great Wall of China, um, give, as well as a taxi in China. Give me as a, well as uh, oh, a man. few restaurants in China. Well, g- okay, I, I mean, so, it was a good year. I want to ask. It's getting lit up. So while uh, Parker's going to find a nice question for you from the audience, the audience is uh, giving us some all, nice all your friends from home have put a number in. So I want to get to all the numbers as quickly as possible, yeah. Kyle. We're getting we're getting close to the end of the show here, but give me a phrase you learned on your study abroad in China. Gong hao fa shui. Gong hao fa shui. Gong hao fa shui. Don't even tell me what that means. I don't want you to tell me what that means. Gong hao fa shui. I'm just gonna say that the next time I feel like it's a proper time to say it. Gong hao fa shui. The beer also is not ting sao. It's ting zao. Ting zao. So the interesting thing about Mandarin and Cantonese is it's like singing is um it's very much the the tone so so you you kind of go up so that's the interesting thing to learn and yeah. and so yeah that's okay. actually pretty yeah, sweet yeah, I didn't know so let me know dude off camera i'm gonna ask you all about abroad that's really cool oh dude best right. semester of my life is this gonna be the last okay. question no no no, 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 no no we have to get to these numbers these are all his oh, friends right. 37 friends who's brooke brooke but, newland okay andre tree can't see me 213 we'll make it because i want to go i just want to read those ones lily mosher is that how you say her you name? find lily out mosher. you know her she's southern california two, two sammy's thir- her dog hi sammy and mosher 213 lily's the best looking woman you'll you'll see down in southern california i love lily mosher yeah. She dances. She, we should see her dance. Can you dance? I may have to get that going too creepy. Yeah. Okay, 213. It's you, odd. You find out your mate is gay. Do you try to work it out or do you leave? So you see the I leave. Uh, so, so I leave, but it, that doesn't mean I leave the friendship, the relationship, and what we've built emotionally. But obviously you leave the physical relationship. Um, but Kyle, so- Kyle, I don't want to. I don't want, I like the physical relationship. Can we work that part out too? I don't but know. But does, does, does she still get to go make love to other women? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want her to be free. I want her to be able to live her lifestyle without me holding her back. And if that means us staying husband and wife and her being a lesbian, but us emotionally being connected and there for our kids... I get that as long as I can go have some fun on my, you know, with women too. I get that. I understand that. <laughs> yeah, open dialogue, communicate. I, I'm, I'm think, so confused. I think an emotional bond is, is significantly stronger than a sexual bond. This color one is getting me sauced up. <laughs> yeah, how much dude, alcohol? Dude, this? 37. Dude, Br- Brooke Newland. I'm on Lily it. Mosher, Mosher, sorry. Oh, Brooke Newland's my best friend. Her oh, husband's Brooke. a great golfer. Brooke Newland. Is, that, is Brooke a... Brooke's a girl. Okay. I just didn't is know. Is she a girl... If has... you could become one of the best artists in the world, which one would you choose? Music, writing, or acting? So of writing. those categories... Oh, or acting. 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 Okay. Acting, go. although... Although, to be honest with you, writing would be so... Like, if you were Hemingway, I think you're significantly more interesting. There's I won't say this about, about my time at the Groundlings. Actors are, are shallow, annoying people. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Word bullets. Shots I think actors, I think actors are, are 95% bullshit. Whereas <laughs> a writer... I agree. Yeah, I don't want, you know what? I'd rather be a writer. But I'm dyslexic, so I, I feel as though I can't accomplish that. But if I could be a, a significant writer, I would do that. I think it's such. You look at Hunter S. Thomas. You look at. I may have butchered that name. You look Tom, at. There's, uh, there's yeah, something Tom, about it. being able to, whatever you're thinking, to put it on paper for everyone to understand. If you're an actor, it's one thing. If you're if you're a painter or a, a musician, you're, there's something about writing that if you're a good writer, you can literally paint a picture in your head. You can create the whole entire environment 
of what you you have. And that's something that's, yeah. that's absolutely amazing. When you find a good writer. And that and, and to that point, I like music because I think with music you are you're it's poetry through that instrument, but you get this adrenaline. What rush. instrument? I mean, it would have to be for me guitar or or drums, some sort of on the main stage. Do we get cut a, off at six o'clock? Is does YouTube say you paid? You didn't pay no, for this. It, we, it does, but I want to. I want to end the show with what is your favorite sing along song? And if we can, can we sing to the end? Of, can we sing it as we as we as we close the show? My favorite sing. Do you want to answer Lily Mosher's number or Katrina Lampkin's number? Of course. Oh, we got it. Oh yeah. God, you put me between my future mother in law and pick and one. Lily you got to pick one. You only, Lily, you I'm can, sorry. Go with Trina. Go with oh Katrina. gosh! Trina, okay, this is the last question. Last question, and then hi, at- Trina. You're watching. This is awesome. Hi. Sorry, Lily. I love you. And then we're gonna sing, sing our hearts out as we leave. Okay, so, so eighty-two. If you were to take a national poll and everyone answered honestly, what number do you think would be the average of all the people as to the number of sex partners a person has in their life? So the average number of sex partners a person has in their life. This was written in 1991. I feel as though it's probably increased now. I would probably say the average is 15 before being married. Or am I way off? No, wow, I, think that, I would. I would say that's pretty spot. 15. Average, I, I don't know. I, I might. For I think, me, I unfortunately, I can tell you. For me, unfortunately. There's individuals. I won't name any of my friends' names that go 30 plus and then there's some that that like brooke brooke has known her husband since 15 years wow. old so, I, so that's I probably keep, lower numbers i i keep them i keep my number close so i'm not in the national average Are you, you've only had sex once <laughs> twice he is a liar so this is what i don't get no this is, so i from last episode they talked about how you kind of didn't have your most you didn't have a sexual experience because you felt like you were a fat kid until you gave the 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 years from 19 to 21. Dude, I've been a fat kid my whole life, and <laughs> I had sex for the fi- first time like at 15. Um, no, that's been- impress- impressive because for me, what my point was is growing up as a fat kid – you have to use your personality a lot. You have to be friendly with everybody. And I feel like that's how we kind of have bonded. But the, because here's the thing. A lot of girls use the word cute. You're so cute. And I'm like, no, oh, do you want to make out with me? Oh, no, you just want to be my friend because I'm I, cute. But oh. I strategically in seventh grade started the rumor that I had a big PP. I started that rumor that I had eight inches in my pants. And I everyone believed it. I'm and so when I hit so freshman happy. year, those older girls knew, the girls in my grade knew. So I felt like the girls that I hung out with kind of viewed me as like, you know, he's kind of experienced, got an eight inch penis. Let's let's That's let's Kyle eight mile. I hooked up I peaked That's, in high school. That is I, will Kyle, not lie. I peaked in high school. Kyle eight mile. Well you we, we, Kyle eight mile. Kyle eight mile in his pants. Kyle 8 Mile, I have a question for you. What is your favorite sing-along song? Because I want to sing this out, and I want to sing out to the end of the show. Baby Shark. All right, everyone, we're going to be singing Baby Shark. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Let's Cut the Small Talk. Thank you, everyone. Okay, pick one more, because that's hard for me to sing. Let's Cut the Small Talk is out now. It's raining men. It's raining men. Hallelujah. It's raining men. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We appreciate you all. We will see you on the next one around. fun we loved it i love um, you we had a best. blast um yeah we, we we gotta do this again i'm sweating i'm so we're hot. still on camera uh, uh we're not on camera but uh we got i mean we could be do you want to be on camera again kyle no i'm saying are people are just us oh they're listening to you right now oh that's interesting i'm gonna flash you want to uh, uh, Kyle this wants an encore. Everyone, should. in the comments, do you want an encore? For those of you who are left, I need to see at least five people, five different people saying encore. 
and we're going to put the, the screen back on Kyle. Yeah, we should have done an encore. Go on camera. I, oh, I got, we El, got it. El Jefe, Jeff I mean, Ruger has said from the, we from the main We got, favor. I need, I need, we need four more people to say encore. Answer encore, encore, you, you encore, encore. To, uh, call in the number, and then you didn't, then you didn't ask any of the questions. We got Is there it. an encore? I need you to sing it, Scott. I need you to sing it. <laughs> It's raining, it's raining man. man. Oh yeah, yeah Kyle needs to stand up on that man. couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, that is that wild. Question. We went live for a hot sec. Yeah.